I turned around and I went, oh, this tall? <laughs> <laughs> and I think Mike and Kent looked at each other and went, that's her. <laughs> so you got the question. I know. I know. Well, so 63 and a half inches. So you get the role and then you shoot the pilot. Get the role and life just. What flips. happened? What was it like? What do you remember most about going to shoot the pilot? I remember the Greenbush twins. Like the first thing I saw were these babies. And I was so excited because I traveled everywhere with a baby doll because I wanted to have babies around as much as possible. So there were babies. And then the owner of the motel in Sonora had a puppy. This is my impression. We got babies, we got puppies. We got babies, we got puppies. And then. They put me in my costume, and there's a button hook in my dressing room, and they teach me how to use a button hook to button my boots. This was the greatest game of dress up <laughs> in the history. And it was snowing, and then there were horses, and then there were other dogs, and then there were they, there were grandparents and woolly things, and then there was Michael. And I just I remember that first day, just thinking this is this is going to be the most fun thing ever. And it was such an intimate group because it was just the fam The only people in that episode were the family, um, so so Dr. Shen and his adjutant, and Mr. Edwards. That was it. Um, and so it was a really. It was just. It was just magic. It was just incredible. And I remember Michael um, in his ski parka and his gloves. I'd never seen anyone do this before. You know, he smoked. This is not a secret. Everybody smoked back then. It was the seventies. The seventies, except us kids, obviously. Um, except for Matthew Laberto, but we know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Don't smoke in the basement, kids. Not by the box of rags, you dumb dumb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he his cigarette and he put it out in the palm of his ski gloves. Oh. And then he saved the filter and put it in his pocket. Which, by the way, was a sign of a conservationist in 1974. Because <laughs> those are the things that don't degrade. And he'd have all these little butts in his pocket at the end of the day. But I'd never seen anyone put a cigarette out in the palm of their hand. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's made an impression. It's still here 50 years later. So you're nine years old, and this is a question I'm sure you get a lot. You had a lot of words to remember. How did you do that? What was your process? Well, first, I underlined them with crayon. <laughs> Seriously, because there weren't Sharpies. So I underlined them with crayon. And then <laughs> I just got lucky. I, I have, I guess, I've never been di officially diagnosed, but I think this is the description of a photographic memory. When I work, if I forget a line, rather than trying to shuffle through and find it, the page pops up in my mind's eye, and I can see the shape of the line, and then I know the line. So I think that's a photographic memory, and it's been there since I was a kid. Um, in fact, when I had really difficult assignments in high school, I would write them into dialogue because I knew I could memorize that easily. So I would turn it into a scene. And then Socrates said, <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna get serious. Top five favorite episodes that you would hear. Right? Yeah, make me pick. Top five and why? Why would okay, they, top why five. Are well, what, one and two. Okay, does a two-part account is two? Two-part accounts is one. Two-part accounts is two one? one? Yeah. It is. Okay, well, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Is one. Uh, number one. Um, Why? Well, there's a, a couple different reasons. First of all, I thought it was an incredible story. I thought that the, the spiritual message in there and just the message about love was so apparent. Personally... Um, it's the clearest demonstration of my relationship with Michael. Like, all that emotional stuff was 100% uh, real. I could barely speak at the end when we met at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Thirdly, I was the only child on location. We went to Northern California, and I was the princess. <laughs> I had Michael, I had Victor, and I had Ernie Fortnite, and the whole crew. And I was in heaven. I, I didn't like to share them with anybody. I don't care. They were all mine. Um, and I got to do so many fun things, uh, like stand in f the freezing Stanislaus River and wash behind my ears, um, stuff like that. Okay, so that's one. And there was a bird. And um, there was a bird. There's a bird. There's, a bird. There's, a bird. There's animals. Okay, one, two, country girls. <laughs> Why? 
Why? Country girls. Because it, it's the, the, the starter. It's what starts everything off. It's, it's, it is. It's the engine. And, you know, real quick, boom, the, the whole relationship with Nelly is right there. And you know exactly what everybody in town is and what their motives are and what they want. It's so perfectly written. And um, it's, it's, just, it's just a great episode. So that's two. Um, uh, town Party, Country Party. Town Party, I'm Country Party. kind of all about season one, which is weird. Town Party, Country Party, because I had so much fun doing it with all those girls around. And wait, Town Party, Country Party was with Kim Richards, too. Olga. Um, I remember some of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I had for breakfast, but I remember this. Um, I really enjoyed shooting that one, and I also thought it was a really important story to tell, though I was only nine years old. I just thought, why would any, why sh people are not supposed to be mean to each other. And little did I know that we were sort of setting the template for the anti-bullying movement with that episode. So that's three. That's three. <sighs> <laughs> and mine's I think it's the title. Days of Sunshine, Days of Shadow. Days of Sunshine, Days of Shadow. Which actually they sh probably should have just titled Get Doc Baker. And they stole that from Gloria as well. That's her, that's her title. Oh, that is. Days of Sunshine, Days of Shadow. Um, I, I, that was um, fun because I just had got so, it was so dramatic. I had so much acting to do and giving birth. and. Was that you in the tornado or was that a stunt double? With the cat. That's me. Cups. That was you. That's me. They hit me with a little soft two by four or something or other and sort of flew by me. I think there was there might have been a stunt double for a wider shot, but they flew that board with the big fan right by me. I'm gonna tell you one. Sorry, I have to digress for one half a second because no, that's I'll make this my next favorite. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's your next favorite? Oh, the raccoon. <laughs> Why? Well, a raccoon. You have to understand that anytime any animal was on that set, that's where I was. Babies, babies, puppies, animals, that, that was my yeah. focus. That's all I cared about. And Jack the dog, I love Jack Barney. Was the monkey. Um, Bandit. Bandit. Love Bandit. <laughs> uh, I have a dog now um, named Sundance, looks just like Bandit. She's so cute. Anyway, um, got to work with the raccoon, which was amazing for me. And it was just so much fun. I will tell you that here's the story. So my husband and I are home, this is a couple weeks ago, and he's flipping through the channels and the raccoon is on. And there's the shot where Melissa Sue and I are taking him to taking Jasper to school yeah. on the leash and they let the dog loose. The dog comes running up and the raccoon's like, and Tim, who's the director, says, wait, that's a real raccoon. And you're children and that's a dog. <laughs> Did it was any, a simpler time. Did, did any of the parents say, why are you sticking a dog on the raccoon that's going to climb up my daughter's dress and bite her? <laughs> Apparently the raccoon bit the director. Oh. And they didn't tell me, which is probably smart, because I would have been afraid. <laughs> All right, so that was your top five. That's my, that's my top five. What do we think of your top five? I mean, I, I stumbled into it. I don't know. I'm sure there's more, but yes, that's five. Okay. Um, so you're making all these incredible episodes, you're doing all this incredible stuff. When did you, Melissa Gilbert, realize that this was a big deal and that you were in fact famous? I never really, 100%. It was just sort of things I did. Um, I'll tell you, I remember very clearly as a young adult, maybe, maybe an adolescent, riding in the car with my mom. And I said, mom, what's it like to be famous? And she went, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I said, what's it like to be famous? She said, you are. And I said, no, I mean, like, famous. She said, you are. And I said, no, but like Farrah Fawcett, like famous. And she said, you are. <laughs> and I said, I, but what does it feel like? She said, I don't know, what does it feel like? <laughs> um, and that's right about the time I found out that like back then they had this thing called Q ratings. Yes. on television where they could actually measure the popularity of an individual. And apparently I had the number one TVQ rating for any female across all of television for like five years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I still had envy the dishwasher at night. <laughs> so I didn't even 
that's how, that's why I didn't know what famous was. I mean, I, you know, I had to babysit my sister, I had to empty the dishwasher, I had chores that I had to do, I had to pick up the poop, dog poop in the backyard, that was my job. I don't know. So, your job, other than animals and babies, yes. puppies, what were your favorite parts? Did you prefer the dramatic episodes, the comedic episodes, the, like, what did you really enjoy when you got a new script and you read through it? What made you go, oh, this is something I'm excited about. Well, let's, let's be clear. It wasn't, I, made, I didn't wait for scripts. I ran to the writers all the time and said, what are we going to do next? What's coming? What's, what are we going to do? What do I get to do? Am I going to have fun? What's it about? Oh, and Mary's going blind. Okay. <laughs> blind. We're really going to do it. Okay. Um, so I, I was, you know, I was always sort of looking to see what was next. And little did I know, you know, not a trained actor, but I was actually connecting my performance to what was coming. So I knew how to map out emotionally where my character was going in his mind. But that was just an instinctive thing. Very good. Um, so you spent a great deal of your childhood in the 19th century. Yes, I did. I grew up, I tell, Allison and I tell people all the time, I grew up in the 1800s. What <laughs> strange skills do you have? Like, what can Melissa I do can, as a result of being in the 19th century? I can drive a six-up stagecoach. Um, I can drive a buckboard. I can drive a wagon. Um, I can, I, I actually learned how to play mumbly peg, which is a really dangerous game. Yeah. It's where you throw knives at each other's feet. Um, <laughs> I can I can race it with the wagon wheel and the stick thing. Um, I'm a really good frog catcher. <laughs> that was an important skill to have. Oh oh and oh, my, Tim will tell you when right when there. we first got married, he was living on a lake in Michigan, and he took me up to the lake uh, after we got married, and I said, "Do you have a fishing pole?" And he said, "Well." Yeah, I, yeah. So I took the fishing pole and I went down to the water and I dug up a worm and pulled the worm out and put it on the hook and he went, "I married the right woman." Right. This is a sense-making question. So let's okay, imagine. Let me, let me get yeah, ready. you got to get in the mode. So imagine it is 1970-something and you are back filming Little House. What do you hear in your memory? What do you smell in your memory? What do you see? Take it away. Um, it's weird. When we were on the ranch, when we were outside, there was no buzz from electrical wires or phone wires. It's silent. That was the first thing I noticed. Um, the smell of the fake gas campfire, I remember. Um, the bee smoke for smoke, I remember that smell. Um, Dinty Moore's beef stew. Extremely evocative. Taste and the smell. <laughs> um, what were, what else? Uh, taste, of, feel. Feel. Feel hot and sweaty or freezing cold because we were always shooting summer and winter and winter and summer. And if you know Simi Valley, she's no shrinking violet out here. She gets warm. And so it would get a little toasty. Although I never fainted. I know some other people fainted. Two people fainted. <laughs> Allison fainted, Natch, and Sean Penn fainted. Sean Penn fainted. That's right, I am tougher than Sean Penn. <laughs> and every time I see him, I tell him that. All right, now we're going to do some name association. Okay. I am this going to say fun. name. This is a great interview, Chris. <laughs> it's like you've interviewed me before. It's so weird. <laughs> um, I'm going to say name. You tell me what immediately comes to mind. Okay. Catherine McGregor, Mrs. Olson. Cackle. Cackle. <laughs> Dabs Greer, Reverend Alden. Squishy. Squishy. <laughs> Kevin Hagen, Dr. Baker. Tall. Tall. Karen Grassley, Mom. Grace, Elegance. Grace and Elegance. Ray Bolger, Toby No. Dancing. Dancing. Like, why don't tell us about that? We danced, I danced with Ray Bolger. I danced, I danced with him. The Scarecrow from I the Wizard of Oz. And he signed a picture for me of himself as the Scarecrow of Oz, and it's the only autograph photograph hanging in my house. Fantastic. Wow. 
Um, Barney slash Jack the dog. Barney slash Jack the dog. Uh, foxtails. Yeah. Did he get them for real, or was it all? No. Okay. No. Okay. Laura uh, did foxtails out of Jack's ears. Ernest. And he's dead. Borg nine. Charlotte Stewart, Miss Beetle. Pretty. <laughs> Allison Arngroom. Bestie. Bestie. Now, is there a story you guys were out getting ice cream or something early on in the show? <laughs> yes. And we, um, first of all, I, I, I live a very, very restricted life. Allison had total freedom. So sleeping over at Allison's house was the only place I had freedom. So we would go, just go, with like, the two of us at 11 years old walking down Hollywood Boulevard in 1976, really not safe, safe. but we'd go get ice cream and stuff, and we were out getting ice cream one day, and this woman came and saw the two of us, and she grabbed me and hid me behind her and confronted Allison and said, you're mean to her. <laughs> Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, great. Um, That's what Michael called him. They do. They do. They yeah, do. So, you've been up to the ranch. We yeah. saw you on Good Morning America yesterday. What was that experience like to get up to the ranch it's, and to see the resurrection? <laughs> <laughs> to see myself running down the hill. Um, that kind of freaked me out for a second. And, and then when I said, who did that? And they said, Rachel Greenbush. Like, oh. Rachel Greenbush told me that she carried Carrie up the hill. <laughs> she did, she carried Carrie up the hill. Carry, carry, carry up the hill. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't been back in a really long time, but to go back and see those flats geolocated where they were was really um, amazing. Really amazing. Emotionally, was, was it happy? Was it sad? Was it everything all at once? Sentimental bittersweet, I think, is the best way to say it. And to be there with Allison and Karen, that, and Dean was there that day, right, right. Was, was really um, important. So there are 12,000 people, I think, in this tent. Um, <laughs> there are 12,000 12, people from all over the planet Earth here this weekend. What is the secret sauce? Why is this? Uh, I looked it up. 1974 saw the premiere of Chico and the Man, wow. Happy Days, wow. and the Rockford Files. And to my knowledge, there is no three day long Rockford Files <laughs> going on anywhere in the world. So, why is this here? Why is this happening? So easy. Michael Landon. Yeah. 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 Woo! That's it. What, what would you think? What would he think of this weekend? Oh, like he, he I just keep thinking about him. He would be so blown away that this is his legacy. It would really, um, he'd be so proud. I don't think he, ha I, I don't think we, any of us stepped into this thinking this is where we'd be 50 years later. Um, he would have loved this. As he should. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go to audience questions, um, I have in this envelope five choice pieces of dialogue from the show. <laughs> Melissa has not seen these. Some of them are real short, some of them are real long. Long? You said anything long ever. I did, I had those speeches. So. Now, do you want me to perform these? <laughs> You, whatever you want to do. Let me see what I can do. I mean, this is like, hey, act. here, hi, act. Act, 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 whichever one you pick. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, you know something, Pa? I've decided something. Home is the nicest word there is. Aww. Bravo. Oh, this one's easy too, but you, okay. I picked that. 
Mrs. Olson? Mrs. Olson, up here. Nelly, <laughs> your mother wants you. <laughs> You're such a good friend, Nelly. <laughs> Bunch of questions from the audience. We'll get through as many of these as we can. How long do we have? Oh, 18 minutes. Okay. Okay, cool. okay. I'll try and answer them quick, too. If you could say one thing to Michael Landon today, what would you say? Oh. Thank you. We love you! That's mean. I don't know who wrote that. But it would be, I miss you. Okay. Um, this yeah. question comes from Susan in Milford, Connecticut, but she's here now. Um, what was your rapport like with all the animals on set? Jack, Bandit, Jasper. There, I can't. What can I tell you? I mean, they were my favorite. They, that's. I mean, it was my whole life. And the coolest thing was when we had wild animals on the show, like deer or wolves or bears or whatever. The trainers that came raised different animals together. So they would have a crow being raised with a wolf. Or uh, uh, at one point there was a panther being raised with one of the bears. And so the panther was a baby and they brought the other animal with the animals. So I spent the entire day just walking around with this baby panther in my arms. It was heaven, heaven. Now, did you get to play with the dogs when cameras weren't rolling? Or were Couldn't play with Jack or, or, uh, Barney and Jack or Bandit. They were not people dogs, they were treat dogs. They worked for food. <laughs> F-U-D, with an umlauts over the U. <laughs> Nagy. Okay, here's a question. Here's a question from Carolyn, um, and I will add on to it a little bit, but the question is, did you keep the cross from the Lord is my shepherd? Yes. And then I will add on to it, what do you have? What did you, what did, what did you end oh, up I with? Have. What did you end up with? After I that? actually didn't take a lot of stuff, um, and I've since kind of let a lot of it go. The cross I have... Uh, the call sheet from the screen test I have, my first script I have. I have a piece of paper with my audition scenes typed on my grandfather's typewriter on on that. Um, I had the red dress from the end. My mom saved that for me. But I since have auctioned that off. I've, deci I've decided to um, do some early Swedish death cleaning in my life. <laughs> Honestly, like way in advance. I just, I felt like I was traveling through life with all of this stuff with me. And it belongs with other people who will really appreciate it. So I let a lot go. Um, okay, this is from Stacy from Pasadena. Uh, if you could relive any moment of your time on Little House, what would it be? Oh, the day Mike named me Half Pint, the first day. That was a good day. That was fun. I mean, it was just such a, it was the beginning of the adventure. And uh, just the conversation trying to figure out what to nickname me was And why, classic. can you tell everybody about why the nicknames happen? So classic. <laughs> well, we all know, I mean, if you read the Little House in the Prairie books, Laura's pause nickname for Laura was actually half pint of cider, half drunk up. So technically quarter pint, I mean, really. Um, but we got to the set the first day and Mike said, oh, now there's two Melissa's. Um, her nickname is Missy, do you have a nickname? And I said, I don't have a nickname. He said, well, do you want a nickname? And I said, yes, call me Moisha. <laughs> and he looked at me like, he looked at me and he said, that's an old Jewish man's name. <laughs> Where did you hear that? And I said, I don't know, but it's really kind of cool. And he said, no, we're calling you half by <laughs> And that was it. And that was it. That was it. These, the whole cast, they all call me half pint still. Except for the kids who were younger than me. Oh, this is this is. Is this mean? Per, no, there's okay. potential legality around this one. Legality, tell me. What is the final word on whether or not you intentionally shoved mud in Allison's yeah. mouth <laughs> during the back to school mud fight? <laughs> Let's be honest. It wasn't mud. That was a cattle watering hole. Oh. It's dry right now. If you go up to the ranch, you can see the pond, but it's dry now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was accidental, I swear. I, 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 I did not intentionally shove a handful of cow dung in Allison's mouth. <laughs> I, we 
definitely have been known to give each other a hard time, but that's taking things a little too far. It was totally accidental. But I will tell you that they were so freaked out that we were wrestling that thing. They were like cleaning our ears out with alcohol and all this stuff. And Allison went, but she put it in my mouth. <laughs> I fully anticipated like three weeks later there'd be like a tree growing out of one of my ears. But we were fine. It was okay. And I still to this day, you know, I, I mean technically if she wanted to shove a handful of now, when, mud in my mouth, I would have to take it. When you think about that mud fight, did you guys rehearse? Was there a fight choreographer or was it you and Allison being like, okay, then I'm going to do this? Or, you, or was it just, let's jump in the mud? No, 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 they made a stuntman either. Because we, they trusted us to beat each other up pretty safely. <laughs> <laughs> that is the strangest sentence I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> it's such a weird life I've had. Um, they, I, I mean, they... You know, you could, Mike's a great fight choreographer, so it's really not that big a deal. I, and we just sort of had a general idea of where we were going to go, and they, they gave us parameters and stay here, and then just go. And, and we you, and you went. went. And you went. We went. What was your favorite episode to film, and why? They were all so much fun to film. Um, I, I, I think I had the most fun when there were the most kids around, because there was someone to play with and do all kinds of stuff with. Generally, I was, I, I was with Allison a lot, but I hung out with the boys more. Okay, this question comes to us. <laughs> I'm no dummy. <laughs> this question comes to us from Poland. Um, Kasla and Chris from Poland. Wow. Hi, uh, guys. Welcome. Hey there. Um, we grew up in Poland during the Cold War. Little House on the Prairie was the only TV show allowed behind the Iron Curtain. Wow. Wow. We have loved you. <laughs> what was the most challenging or difficult episode to film? Oh, golly. Um, the polls got tears. <laughs> uh, the last episode. The last movie, The Last Farewell, that was the hardest, most, it was just a, it was just like a, a three week long funeral, really. What is your last memory from The Last Farewell, like the last time you left Big Sky? I remember, I didn't want to leave, and I stayed as long as I could, just kind of like stalling to go. And I remember walking out of the town and I, and I turned back, and everyone was gone except for Mike. And he was just sort of standing there with his hand in his pockets with all this rubble around him. There's a picture of that somewhere, too. And um, I thought, wow, it's really over. And, uh, and I turned around and just walked away. And let him have his time. Sorry. Moving you asked. <laughs> Meanies. <laughs> Moving on. Let's, um, have, let's see how many times we can make Melissa cry. <laughs> I did it on the show every week. Running, crying, crying, running, running and crying. Crying and running. Tripping, <laughs> falling, crying, running. And the door crying. And running like, run a quarter mile. Or run a half mile. <laughs> and they used to do this thing. Michael started it where I'd be running away from camera and they, no, they wouldn't yell cut. They'd go cut. <laughs> there she goes. Eventually, I stop and slow down and turn around, and they all be laughing. Come on! Like the eighth time, it gets to be a bit much. I start to question my own intelligence. <laughs> um, this goes this goes back to your your running, but it also is. Did you actually climb Jonathan's mountain? No. Uh, in the Lord is my shepherd. Did you climb part of the mountain? Part of the mountain, a little bit here and there. That was Paula Martin. My my stand-in and photo double did all the climbing. She was a grown-up lady. It was a, it was dangerous. When I was on the mountain too, they had cables on me and there were stunt men all around. And... Uh oh. Oh, is it me? No, not me. Okay. None of these are me. Well, you know what I mean. But this is. Did you ever like like any of your fellow cast members? <laughs> Like, like? I know what like like means. There's a reason I didn't write any of this in 
my books. <laughs> yes, when I was little, I liked, liked Patrick Laberto. Oh. And when I was older, I liked, liked Stan Ivar. Oh. Play John Carter. What's not to like? Okay. If you well, cry anymore. Okay. These are all the questions I have from the audience. Um, no, no, it was if you have a direct line to Michael Landon. We already discussed that. And we don't want to cry again. Um, what are you looking forward to for the rest of this weekend? Like, what's food. exciting? Food. <laughs> I didn't get a lunch, real lunch break, so I'm starving. Um, I don't know. I mean, listen, my whole focus is honestly, you guys, has been getting my brother here. So that kind of does it for me. And you're welcome. He's gonna kill me. He just keeps leaning over and going, what have you done to me? So you and I are doing this, I think, twice more, tomorrow and Sunday. We are Great. having a conversation, so, and the one tomorrow is at the big stage, which there are no chairs, it's a big amphitheater over that way. So if you would like to hear more with the incredible and fabulous Melissa Gilbert, um, you will have that opportunity. You will have that opportunity 